What's up guys, welcome to another YouTube video. Today we're gonna to be doing some call outs in After Effects. So last week I got the opportunity to film the brand new BMW 4 Series. I've just been putting the video together for work and decided to use call out titles to show the features of each car and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you guys how you can create these from scratch and then track it to your footage very easily. So let's jump straight into Premiere Pro. This is the first clip that I'm going to be adding a call out to, which is just a front shot of the BMW 4 Series. I shot this in S-Log 2, 100 frames a second in 1080p, just on my Sony a7 III, which you're seeing right now. The first thing I do before I go into After Effects is duplicate the layer or the region. The reason I do this is once you go into After Effects and you start doing things, it becomes rather destructive. So if you make a mistake, then you will have to delete that region and then go back, find the footage, put it all in and edit it all from scratch again. But to save the hassle of going to find that clip once again, all you have to do is hold down Option or Alt and drag it up and you've got a duplication of that region. So pretty much the bottom layer is just there to save your backside if you make a mistake. Simple. Another reason you might want to do this is if you're using effects inside After Effects, um, when you put it back into Premiere, it puts all your effects and the footage which you've taken into After Effects into one region. Meaning that once you're in Premiere, you have to treat them as one region and it, whatever you do to that region will affect all of the footage inside that region. But by doing this, you can go into After Effects, add the animation over the top, hide the footage before you come back into Premiere, and then you've still got your footage and your effects on top of each other in two separate regions and then you can color grade and color correct just your footage and it won't affect the animation on top. So you choose what you want to do but this is the way I always work. So before I add warp stabilizer or anything else to this region I right click and go over to replace with After Effects Composition. That will then load up an After Effects Composition and put your footage straight into it. The first thing I want to do is add warp stabilizer. So you come over to effects and presets, type in warp and then drag that straight onto your layer. And now you just need to wait and let that analyze the clip. The reason I do that now is because it gives you a solid base to start building on. The last thing you wanna do is start tracking things to something and then warp stabilize just that clip because then it will not actually track perfectly. So as long as it's warp stabilized now, then you can pre-compose that and you're all good, you're golden. So once that's done, you just wanna play it back and make sure you're happy with how the warp stabilizer is acting. Sometimes you gotta let it play through once because it does render in real time, so bear with it. It happens, it doesn't work as fast as what we may. So once you're happy with the warp stabilization, right click on your layer and come down to pre-compose and make sure you click on move all attributes into a new composition. Click OK. The reason for that is it holds the warp stabilizer on the footage and then puts that in the pre-composition. If you choose the top option, then it puts the footage inside the pre-composition, but then adds warp stabilizer to the pre-comp, which we do not want. The next thing you want to do is create a null object. So go down to your layers, right click, go to new and null object. What a null object is, is somewhere where we're going to take all the information for the tracker, save it into the null object, and then we're going to make the animation, which is the call out, read that information from the null object. So it's pretty much just a way of storing information easily inside After Effects. So the next part is you want to create the tracker. So if you come down here on the right hand side and click on tracker, click on the layer you wish to track and then click on track motion and you'll see this little point show up. You can drag this anywhere you want, but we're gonna drag it down to this center wheel hub. Um, and you wanna make sure that the dot in the middle, the little cross, is on a contrast point. Put the smaller square around the object you wish to track, and then the second square will be where you think that object will be within in the next frame. And that kind of moves along. So pretty much don't make them too big because it has to analyze way too much footage. But once you've done that, make sure you're at the beginning of the clip and then click on play and it will analyze the footage for you. You just wanna watch it through, make sure you're happy with it. It makes any mistakes, you can just drag it back to any point where it makes a mistake. You can grab it, this, and move it around to wherever you want and then you can press play from that point onwards and it will continue to analyze it. So I've already mentioned the null object. What you want to do is just make sure it says motion target null 16 because that's the null object which I'm using down in the layers. If it doesn't say null 16 or the null which you're using, come up to edit target and you can choose the null in your drop down menu. And then all you need to do is click on apply and make sure it's X and Y axis and then click OK. And now that's saved into the null object. So the next thing we need to do is create the actual animation and then parent that to the null object. 
So you can make these call outs as stylistic as you wish. We're just going to go for something fairly simple here, nice and sleek. And we're just going to make sure it's in the correct font because of BMW, because it's a brand, so we've got to stick to the brand guidelines. First up, what we're going to do is create a circle. So we're going to come up here to the tools and click on Eclipse tool, hold down shift, and then just make a small circle around where we want to track. We want this to be filled in white, so you just want to press option and click on the fill tool, and then bring the stroke down to zero. What I want to do is animate this so it expands to animate into the scene. To do this, all you need to do is come down to the layer, click on S, and then click on the little stopwatch. That creates a keyframe, so we can make keyframes so it animates and changes certain parameters of each layer as we wish. We want to drag this one across slightly because it's 100%, and then decrease this down to zero. You'll see they actually expands and scales up from the center of the frame and not from the center of the actual shape. To change this, all you need to do is hold down Command, come up to where it says Pan Behind, and then just click on that, and then it will make it so the anchor point is in the middle of that shape. And when you play it back, you'll see it scales up exactly what we wanted. The next thing I want to do is create a stroke, so a circle around that circle, and then a finally another circle so it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. To do that, you just want to duplicate that layer, so press Command D, and then drag this across slightly, and it'll create two circles, one on top of the other, but we want to make the second one ever so slightly bigger. So go to that layer, press S for scale, go to the second keyframe, and then just increase the scale ever so slightly. Obviously, this is a filled in object and we don't want it to be filled in, we want to create a stroke. So hold down Option, come over to Fill and just tap to it says No Fill and then go to your stroke and then just increase the stroke slightly. Click off the layer, make sure you're happy with that, that's pretty good. And then once again, I want to do that once more. So duplicate the layer, Command D, drag that across a little further, go to Scale and then increase that even more and then bring the stroke down, and we're going to use 0.5. What I want to do with that circle is actually make it disappear as it gets to the largest point. So all you need to do is click on that layer, press T for opacity. I don't know why it's T, not sure, but if you know, let me know down in the comments below. Click on the little stopwatch, and then come across a few frames, and then make that to zero. And then play it back. I'm pretty happy with that, that's, that's exactly what I want. If you want to create an easy ease, as they call it, so it slows down, um, all you have to do is click on any of these keyframes, and then go to keyframe assistant, and then easy ease in or out. So in would be obviously before, and out would be after. So I'm gonna choose easy ease in. And then the next thing would be to do the line which animates to be able to put the call out on itself. To do that, we need to come up to the pen tool, and then zoom in using Command Plus. Find the point where that second circle is at its largest point. So here, click on where we want the line to start, zoom out, drag it across, and then create the line. If at any point you want to move this line around, all you have to do is just click and drag on any of the points, um, and it'll do it that perfectly for you. And then we're gonna add the text just at the very top, just above the line. But first we need to animate the line, so we want it to animate in from the point and draw itself. To do that, you wanna open the layer up, come to add, and then come down to trim paths. Once you've done that, open the trim path section of that layer, and if you look at the end point, if you decrease that, it makes the line disappear, and if you increase it, it makes it draw itself in the direction which you drew it to begin with. What you want to do is click on the stopwatch for the end point to create a keyframe. Drag that across slightly and then decrease this down to 0%. And then watch it back and look at the timing. And then what you want to do is pre-compose all of this together and then set it and forget it. We'll call it call out. Hit enter. There we go. That's your call out animation complete. So next up, we need to add the actual text. So we're gonna go over to the text tool, draw the box where we want it to go, and we're just gonna simply put BMW the four. And then what you can do is just highlight all of this, make sure it's in the right font. We want to make the four in just a light font. So just highlight that section, go to light, and then we can highlight it all, and then make it a little bit bigger. Perfect. Just gonna line that up to be at the end of the line like so. And then you can see the text and how the animation would be when it's complete. 
So now we've got the text, we need to animate it to come in once that line has finished drawing itself. So what we're gonna do is go to the effects and presets tab and drag over fade up characters and drag that onto the layer. To alter the animation, we can come down to the layer, open that up in animator, range selector, and what you can see is it's at zero percent and as it goes up, it works its way up because the keyframe will be off to the right hand side. But we can override that at any point and just increase that to 100%. Um, and then we're going to drag that keyframe back slightly. Watch the whole animation back. There you go, I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to close this layer and the only thing we'll have to really do now is select both of these layers, go to parent to link and choose null 16. And at that point we can play it back and it will track for you. The only thing I want to do now is come over to the effects and presets tab again and type in glow. I'm just going to grab the glow preset and just drag it onto both of them layers. All you got to do at this point is press command S to save the project, go back into Premiere and then hit enter for it to render. And once it's rendered, it'll play back the footage with the animation on top of it. And like I said, that's just in this single region. So if I turn that off, then you only see the footage down below. So if I make a mistake inside After Effects, all I need to do is do click that layer again and start all from scratch. It's not that bad. From this point, you can just treat that region as a standard clip. So you can come over to the color tab and then affect it however you want with the color correction and the color grades and any other fancy effects you wish to do. There you have it. And really easy way of creating easy, straightforward call outs which you can use in your footage and track to anything you want. Another tip I will give you is if your footage is like a dolly zoom, so you're zooming in or out or pulling in or out from your subject, then what you can do is in After Effects to give it a little bit more three dimension feel is when you're creating the tracker, you can come over to the tracker and you can choose position and scale at the same time. And what that will do is give you two points and then you can make that on two parts of your subject. So what that'll do is as you push out or push in, obviously your subjects get smaller or bigger. So therefore your call out will also get smaller or bigger at the same rate as what your subject does. Therefore making it look a little bit more realistic and gives it that three dimensional space. And there you go, tracked call outs inside After Effects. Wasn't too hard, was it? And that's it for me today. Thank you very much for joining me. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Hit the bell next to it to get notifications for the next time I post a video. And I will see you in the next video. Laters.